I'm dreaming in dreams bigger than me. Taking my time, giving to me. Paint my life into a masterpiece. Coloring it. Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. Today we are touring the 23rd Street Antique Mall in Oklahoma City. And yeah, we had never been here before so we we're kind of excited to share it with you guys. It's just a quick half of a store. It was huge. Let me just tell you, the store was massive and so yeah. They had a lot of gorgeous things but their prices were this side of Redonculus. I'm just going to tell you right now. Um, we were like, whoa. And yeah so after doing about half the shop and just seeing how expensive everything was so this is only kind of a half of a shop tour they did have a lot of beautiful pieces but again their prices were really really high and i just have a hard time justifying some of these prices which tells me that their rent is probably extremely expensive in this antique shop um like i said they did have a lot of gorgeous pieces most of their items were behind glass which i thought was interesting because you had to walk all the way back up front if you wanted to see anything to have them actually unlock a cabinet for you um, which would never happen in our shop because the only locked cases are right up front because of it's a security thing but each shop has their own thing each shop does their own thing and yeah they did have like i said and you'll probably hear me say it a thousand more times they really did have a lot of nice things but you know Price is king, especially in an economy like we have right now. And a lot of what we looked at really did look like high-end auction or eBay auction prices. So you have to keep that in mind. And, you know, some things weren't too, too bad. Other things were just crazy. We did get a couple of things at this particular antique mall. And I'll show you those in another video but they were for our own collections because I there was just no way that we could have ever made any kind of a profit off of anything if we were to have purchased it from this particular shop just because there's just no way. So we did have a good time looking and we always do. I apologize if the video is kind of speedy but that's basically what we do. You know when you're busy people and you're running your own businesses and you don't have a whole lot of time you just kind of scan through things and look for the things that really interest you. And that's just kind of how it is. Um, I was interested in these because the kitty jar that you see there, that kitty bottle, the grape bit, I have that. And we had actually had the elephant and the clown and we sold those through the shop. But I kept the kitty one for myself because, you know, I have a thing for kitties. And so I just thought it was kind of cool that at least in this particular shop, they have it marked for $39. We did not sell our grape bit bottles for anywhere near that price. Just because we're in the market to sell, not hold on to things, dust them, and pay rent on them for months and months and months. I thought this was really cool. This was like an old receipt book for a rep, like a grocery store or something, or a little market. Um, they had such pretty, pretty pieces. And a lot of art glass, a lot of silver, a lot of china. They had a lot of what I call, you know, the ugly head, big head men that Roger collects, like the Toby jugs and things that were kind of similar a lot of silver pieces. Um, it was, you know, it was a really interesting shop. Almost museum-ish in a way, kind of like, I guess, just because of the way it was set up, which is really pretty. You know, don't get me wrong, I think it's quite lovely. I was interested in this particular bracelet because I have one very similar that I got at an estate sale. I got the bracelet at an estate sale and I got the earrings at another estate sale. And I think I paid two bucks combined. So I thought that was kind of neat. They had a lot of coins, which of course, you know, my husband's really into coins. And so he had to check all of those out. Um, their prices on the coins, like everything else in the shop, were kind of outrageous. And yeah, so we just had a kind of a good time looking around and being amazed at how expensive things were. Um, I did like this cup. It's actually a beer mug, like a stout thing. I thought it was kind of interesting, clearly, because I took it off the shelf to poke around at it. Um, coming up, we have a couple other things that I thought were super interesting. 
and I would love to own, and I have seen lots of Pinterest pictures of them. They are pretty pricey, so I don't know that the prices on these particular items that you're going to see here in a little bit were unjustified, but yeah, I'll explain more when we get closer to them. Lots of milk bottles, and I thought that was kind of cool. A lot of like the old tin toys, lunch boxes. They just had a really good mixture of things, which is always nice. Definitely worth going into if you just want to see like really old, very cool vintage and antique items. Definitely much more of a traditional antique vintage store, not so much. Like our shop has a lot of kind of a mixture of, you know, like Funko Pops and toys and that sort of thing. Um, this shop did not. They definitely stuck more to the older items. You know, of course, there were like onesie twosie items here that were newer, but for the most part, it was definitely an older antique vintage item shop, which I thought was pretty cool. And again, it kind of lended itself to that whole um, museum type store. So these were the things I was telling you about. These apothecary jars are from France. They are gorgeous. And it was a pair for $4.95, another pair for $3.95, and another pair for $2.95. So like I said, I know they're pretty pricey online, but I was kind of shocked to see a full set and to see the prices in person. But there was a lot of milk glass. There was a lot of collectible glass. And I thought that was kind of interesting. It was a really good mixture. I mean, it really was. And it really was definitely worth seeing. And we'll probably go back because they do have quite a bit of uranium glass. And the couple things that we did get that you'll see um, in the next video are those pieces of uranium glass that Roger was able to get. And the prices weren't fantastic, but she did have 25% off, so it kind of made it more bearable. And they were pieces that he doesn't have. I like those plates. They reminded me of my Shenandoah set. These, whatever they are, were creepy as hell because they were frosted everywhere except for their eyeballs. That was weird. And they kept staring at me. Strange. They had a lot of blue and white transferware, which I thought was gorgeous. Um, some more cabinets full of everything that you could think of. Just lots of really interesting things to look at. Um, I love that plate. It's the three bears, but the price was whew, more than I could pay, than I could justify paying for a decorative plate like that. Um, as you can see, kind of peeking in through there, lots more stuff. Um, I don't know if anybody else does this, but whenever I see like pictures of like black and white pictures of people's families, I'm always kind of sad because I'm always thinking, you know, somebody didn't want their family. <laughs> and so they sold them or they got rid of them or whatever. This was kind of a lot of more man cave-ish, I thought. A lot of really interesting things. Very cool. Lots of paraphernalia. Lots of little, like, you know, a mixture of this and that. So definitely this was an interesting kind of a, a fun booth. I really thought this was cool. The gold miners kit, but not for $39, sorry. Although it did come with some little agates on the side there to kind of like, you know, entreat you, I suppose. I did think it was interesting, though, that the um, the gold mining pan looked a lot like a pie pan, <laughs> but very cool. And I love the box. The box was awesome. Some really cool old pictures. Crockery is always a good seller. That price isn't too, too terrible. A little Red Riding Hood cookie jar. Just lots of, you know, bits and bobs. Lots of really interesting things. And this gun cabinet, I remember growing up and my uncle had a gun cabinet like this. You would never get away with this in a home nowadays just because of everything, but it did kind of bring back some memories. Some more beautiful pieces. I love that light cover. I thought that'd be so cute, like in a nursery, which I'm sure is the whole reason for it. And I was pointing it out to Roger and I thought that was really cool. Lots of gorgeous pieces. I'm sorry if you know, my panning around and stuff is making people ill. I've had people complain before, so I do apologize. 
Um, I try not to, and I do try to slow the videos down a bit, but unfortunately, this is kind of how we walk through and look at things. I love that candy dispenser holder thingy for Halloween. Love that. Price was, whoa, more than I would ever pay. But I feel like I say that about everything. It's more than I'd ever pay. Um, not because I myself am a cheap person, but I just can't see, I can't justify spending that kind of money for something that's going to be in my own personal collection. And if I'm going to make money off of it, it can't be for that much either. Again, lots of, you know, beautiful dishes, lots and lots of just gorgeous little things. I loved this chair. So has anybody else seen that movie, House on Haunted Hill, where like all of the carvings in the house had like the children's faces and stuff and they came to life? That's what that chair reminded me of. I was trying to explain it to Roger because, amazingly enough, the man who loves horror movies and is covered in what I would consider horror movie tattoos has not seen that one, apparently, or does not remember it. But it had Liam Neeson, um, Catherine Zeta-Jones. Yeah, it's a good movie. Kind of creepy, though, but that's what that chair reminded me of. The furniture in this place, though, was absolutely gorgeous. Looking at those two there, Roger said they don't glow. Um... But yeah, they had some beautiful, beautiful antique furniture that was just, oh my goodness. Like, I could totally envision my entire house full of this stuff if I could afford it. Gorgeous, gorgeous pieces. And these must be pieces that people get at auctions or they just luck into or they're left to them or something because... Everything they had was in gorgeous condition and, I mean, solid and beautiful. And another one of those little turny things. I was kind of interested, and I'll come up here in just a second. They're place card holders, I guess. I'd ask Roger what they were because I was kind of interested in those. And they're coming up there. See the little girls all standing in a row? I think I focused it on them a little bit better here in a second. Sorry, you're looking at his shoe. But right there. Aren't those cute? They're place card holders, which I thought was really unique. And uh, they're probably silver. We didn't ask to look at any of these cabinets. I couldn't imagine having to walk all the way up front to have somebody walk all the way to the very back of the store with me. So, just checking out all the different things. I like those grapes. Oddly enough, I don't know why I like the grapes. They're just, they're huge. They're like the size of baseballs. That tub thing was intriguing. I couldn't imagine getting clean in something that small, but to each their own. I thought these pictures were kind of cool. They were actually the Philippine Islands, oddly enough. Thought this armoire thing was gorgeous. Some booths were just packed full and some were not. Kind of interesting, but again, super great quality stuff. You know, I didn't see a single thing in there that said as is, meaning that there's a chip or a crack or, you know, something. But I thought that was gorgeous. I mean, look at the carving and the detail work. So beautiful. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Lots and lots of artwork, framed artwork, prints. This booth here had a lot of Native American pieces in it, which I thought, oh, I had to focus on those for some weird reason. But in this next booth, you're going to see they had a ton of Native American pieces that I thought were gorgeous. Like the prayer rugs. Oh, check this out. I adored this china cabinet. Absolutely stunning. The glass is like, bow like bows out at you know, fun angles. All that stuff up there at the top. I mean, you, you had to give yourself plenty of time to just kind of like just look up and down and it was everywhere. But I did love that china cabinet. Um, but yeah, so lots of Native American pieces, stunning, gorgeous pieces. Of course, you know, we're in Oklahoma, so there's a lot of Native Americans here. Very tribal proud we are. And beautiful pieces. And you'll see like the Kachina dolls and stuff that I thought were super cool. So many fun things to look at. Moccasins, gorgeous, gorgeous pieces. I liked this hall chair, or hall, like a hall tree, I guess what they call it. Places for your umbrellas. Look at that deerskin shirt. So gorgeous. The baskets up at the top. Pottery. They really did kind of have, like, 
a great selection of Native American pieces in this particular booth. And of course, more coins for Roger to look at. Okay, so here's the Kachinas, which I thought was really interesting. Lots of silver jewelry. And great, great pieces, baskets. So much good stuff. All right, so I'm going to finish up the video here looking at this booth. We had more people that were walking up behind us, and I try really hard to be as aware as possible and polite about people coming up behind us so they're not recorded. And until next time, remember to collect what you love, love what you collect, and I hope you like these types of videos and let me know because I'll make some more for you probably at the store again because it was great. All right, I love you. Bye.